what is up guys i am back for part two of the 2022 season recap we're gonna start off with event number one at mid ohio but first i wanted to share some awesome pictures of this photo shoot we had with rob wilkinson these are actually for super street magazine well i guess internet article at the time and Rob's pictures always come out great there's no surprise there but step one we had to go through tech of course wanted to show off the cool neons we got for the hot boy status and what a better way to debut my new build at my home track i'm in ohio which is also sponsored by honda in my honda and i also work at honda so it's just a perfect all-around event but my expectations coming into this event they weren't too high this was basically just going to be another shakedown for me i wanted to get the car on track see how competitive it was and then also address any shortcomings that may come up or failures but the car not only surprised me in reliability but also with pace because i actually qualified fifth and within gltc that is not an easy task we're racing green flag flies and we're racing in, in lexington ohio and again so like i said i qualified in a solid fifth position which honestly really surprised me but i quickly learned throughout this first race that i didn't really belong up there um, I just didn't have the consistency and pace that the guys up front had. And I also was a little bit rusty, I guess you could say. Another big issue I had was those tiny mirrors. They looked sweet, but they basically did not work. I just had no visibility of who was around me, so it made me be more cautious during these first few races. They have been side by side for half a lap here, Greg, and they're still doing it through turn one. It is spectacular, and they, they acknowledge and like this rule. That's what makes it fun, but look at the run here. Hout looking way down to the inside into the carousel. He backs out, thought better of it. Didn't want to jump into the keyhole. And then, yeah, the other issue was the car was quite bouncy. I didn't really dial in the setup perfectly. Uh, I had maybe a little bit too much bump stop and packer in the car just to kind of prevent it from bottoming out. It didn't really work. And then, like I said before, just pure rust. Look at this, look at this dumb move right here. Driving way too far over into the grass, almost spinning the car out. So I had a little bit of work to do to get my head back into the game. I'm trying to hold on to as many positions as I could because it was obvious I was falling back quite quickly. And this is a fun little trap I had with Luke McGrew, who also just finished his brand new build of C5 Z06. He picked the better car though. The thing is now, as Coutil comes around, ooh, if there wasn't a touch there, you couldn't have snuck a piece of paper between the two of them. But it, 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 there you see it, that was three turns side by side. These cars are racing nose to tail. What other series do you see this in, Greg? Not Zero, anywhere else. None. Uh, it is a just a superb rules package and, uh, and mating it with the shorter race format. That was the magic that makes this work. If you ran this a half hour, those big heavy cars would really be struggling. For Tom but, O'Gorman, he gets it done at Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course, picks up the checkered flag, Smetigard second, Thorn, Fends off Swenson in a drag race at the line. Wall bump, P5, out in six. Then Curly and McGrew finally got by Cattill. He goes eighth best, Cattill ninth. So yeah, finished ninth position in the first race. Um, still a solid top 10 result. Obviously starting fifth was uh, quite the overachievement, but most importantly, the car was reliable and it finished the race. And I learned a ton about the setup, what the car needed. And I was just eager to get into race number two. For a 15-minute sprint here at Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course. Green flag flies, and we're racing again at Mid-Ohio. Here we go. We're starting race number two. This was based on your fastest lap, so I believe I started 11. So, yeah, quite far back compared to race number one. And, yeah, you can see I already changed the mirrors on the car to the OEM mirrors just so I can see what was going around me. And yeah, this race, the name of the game was to just get my head back into it. Just focus on racing again, get comfortable out there. I try to crawl my way back up through the field and gain a few positions. So a few laps later, we caught back up to Luke. And then we got Aaron and his beautiful Porsche Cayman. Two completely different builds than what I'm driving. But that's the beauty of GLTC. But yeah, in order to get around these people, I had to do a little bit of an opportunistic move. We got Paul Curley in the blue vet that's probably blowing an engine, laying down some uh, little, let's call them banana shells for a loop there. And then, yeah, let's see if we can make our way around this blowing up engine and also maybe make a few moves as well. So, there we go. Uh, yeah, I definitely wouldn't recommend doing that. That's uh, pretty sketchy, but hey, man, sometimes you gotta take the opportunity that's presented to you and just go with it. Race 
race number two done. I was pumped about this one. This was such a good race. Gained a few positions, crawled my way up from 11th all the way to 7th. That's a solid result in my book. Second race in the car, can't complain. Fantastic battles. Gotta let Aaron know I had a good time. And I also have to add this in here. There was a monsoon at mid-Ohio. I've never seen this much rain in my life before. So what do you do? Well, you try to get a workout and you try to swim some laps. Get yourself ready to go for race number three. Green flag and Tomo didn't get a great start. Swenson did. We're racing at mid-Ohio Sports Car Boys. Running down to turn four with three wide. Here we go, race number three, starting in the ninth position. So we made a few spots off the race before, and here we go. Let's see if we can improve even more. These starts, they're always absolutely wild in GLTC. You just have to pick a lane and stick with it and try to not get in people's way and make a move when you can. It's not over yet. Guess where that's loaded its most? Turn one. Out and defending. He's lost a couple of spots that last time around, so he must have made a mistake. There's Jackson Jensen for Vez Randilia behind him. They're just outside the top ten. This time, you got Aaron letting me know he's having a good time. Third place, though. So a few laps later, still battling with Aaron, which then brings some more winning formula guys to the mix. Got Rob and Emil in their K Miatas. And yeah, just uh, having a fantastic battle with these guys. And then eventually I caught up to James Houghton, who uh, might have made a little bit of a mistake here. And by a little mistake, I mean a pretty massive one. He lost uh, quite a few positions. So yeah, moving on up. Let's keep it going. Dispot, uh, I dispatched Lickie and ran down McGrew, so they're having a good scrap, but this one is superb. Still Classic. side by side. Classic battle. These two raced in the very first Grid Live Touring Cup race. They fought each other for the weekend victories. Now they run down in eighth and ninth place, but they're still having the battle of their lives. Here comes Rob Manicherry and Emil Tapp with the winning formula. Three winning formula cars behind Eric Cotill right now. That's a four-car battle for eighth. That's pretty fun and impressive, isn't it? Not over yet. Again, very different. Almost a thousand pounds. Well, maybe not quite a thousand. Eight hundred pounds between the Civic and the Cayman right now. Very different strategies on how to go fast. Mid-engine, rear-wheel drive, front load. This battle with Aaron Lickby was probably one of the best battles I had all season. Just good, clean racing. Me and Aaron, we go way back. We're great friends. We love racing each other hard but always with plenty of respect. But unfortunately, in the end, he did best me. He claimed seventh position, and I got eighth, and then I had to hold off the rest of the winning formula boys. But hey, not a bad race. All right, three races down, pretty solid results, but one more race to go. And this one's always special because in GLTC, race four always has a random invert. And I was lucky enough to be starting on the front row, second place to be exact. It's a bit of a gift, I will agree, but hey, I'm not gonna turn it down. So the game plan going into this race was to stay clean and try to get the car home in one piece. But if I had the opportunity to go for a win, you're damn right that I was gonna go for it. So visor down, relax, get in the zone, and let him know you're going for P1. Behind him, he is your pole sitter, Eric Attil, in the hybrid racing EG to the outside. He is starting in second. Green flag and a late start by Tab, and here comes Wolfbomb around the outside. He takes the lead. 
for a moment. They're four wide heading down towards turn four. Oh, that is incredible. And Walbaum now going to get the, the jump here. Runs a little wide through that corner. I think he wanted to make sure he didn't turn down on anybody. What a start by Matt Walbaum. Well, yeah, that's because he kind of jumped the start just a little bit, maybe. But no, let's, let's not dwell on the path. I'll, I'll let Matt have it. This very, very tight serpentine bit of racetrack here. And this lead duo has had a little bit of a break because of that battling behind that you were talking about. And Swenson. Huge slide over the crest to turn. All right, so not a bad start. Almost one lap complete. I did get passed by Matt, but I managed to maintain second position and things settle down a little bit. So now all I had to do was run consistent, clean laps and not make any mistakes. I don't think I had the pace to keep up with these guys. But I did think at this point, if I can just stick with Matt, be in the draft, I can do this. Whoa, Eric Cantil locks up into turn four. Big uh -oh. slide for the number 82, and Swenson was all on top of him. And they yeah, didn't touch as you can tell, I was pushing hard. Without ABS, real easy to lock up, especially with someone like Jeremy Swenson behind you with that big old V8. So, O'Gorman, he moved up, as you said, but stuck in the gravel at turn one full course caution yeah, unfortunately for the guys in turn one they had a bit of a mishap but fortunately for me that meant i could hold on to p2 a little bit longer because i was really holding these guys up so who knows maybe this race might finish under caution you never know you'll to see they always try to finish the race under green and they did and we're back underway Two racing left. at Mid Ohio Sports Car Course. Swenson with a fantastic restart. Heads up the inside, trying to get overlap on Cattill. Defensive on Thorn through turn one. And it is Walbaum, though. He has to hang on. Let's Here's go for this one, deck. baby. Looks to the outside now to the inside. And it is side by each between Swenson and Thorn here. And now it looks like Swenson got him, and Thorn might be making a move. Cattill looking to make a move as well. He's got He's overlap. Cattill side by side for the lead in his return to GLPC been out since Road America. He wants back in, battling for the top spot at Mid-Ohio. Now the drag race. We'll see what that machine of Coutil has. Walbaum, we know that's a very quick car. It's got a little bit of leg right now and shows it. Will Coutil try and make a deep move down into four? And if so, will Walbaum ramp the outside and use that very well to grab the initial lead? I don't think it's got the legs nope. for the straightaway, but it might have him in the corners here. Swenson right there. Yeah, I almost had him. I was close. Didn't quite have the handling or the straight line performance. But let's just stick with him. And one more lap, anything can happen. People behind me battling. That's also good for me. One more lap. Here is where Swenson ought to really start to pick the pace up. See if he's got enough before they jump on the binders for four. No, he does not have overlap. But here comes Thorne. He's going to try that outside line. You can make this work. He's got overlap, does he? He does. He's down to the inside. Oh, slide around the outside of Swenson and gets the pass done. A little third. bit late in the lap to do it. Here we go. Checkered flag is waving from the flag stand. The final two corners. Look at O'Gorman to Swenson. He wants it. But Matt Walbaum comes out of turn 13 for the first time ever. Matt Walbaum is a victor in Grid Life Touring Cup. He gets it done at Mid Ohio Sports Car Course. Celebrates by dropping those right sides in the grass. Cattill, in his first weekend back in GLTC, grabs a podium in second place. Thorn, third, Man. Swenson, O'Gorman. Second place McGrew, in the first Cap event back. I could not believe it. Yes, the inverted race did kind of give me a freebie there. And the caution certainly helped me hold on to that second place just a little bit longer. But hey, I still had to work for it. Finished second place. I was ecstatic. The biggest takeaway from this weekend was I finished this build and the car finished every race with zero issues. And we got a seventh overall on top of that. I mean, first event, seventh place, freaking awesome. But the next event at Lime Rock, we're really going to show the pace of this car.